Hey folks, welcome back to week 11 of DMD 220 Web Design 1. So I wanted to pick up where we left off last time with the syllabus and talk about what your homework for this week is going to be. So let's go back to the syllabus and we'll take a look. Okay, so in the last online lecture, uh, we talked about the fact that this week, uh, you guys at the beginning of the week in week 11 are going to be finishing up your initial brainstorming steps. Uh, from project two. So we talked about that in the last video, so you can go back and check that out. So that is due at the beginning of this week. Um, meanwhile, uh, sort of in the background as research, uh, you guys were going to uh, visit a number of e-commerce sites uh, and compile a list of visual and interactive elements that you think are most effective. Just doing some research on other e-commerce sites and seeing what those are all about and making a list. Now, you don't need to turn that list into me. That is simply work product for you and your team. Uh, of course, there's some uh, reading, top e-commerce design trends of 2019. So once you get all that stuff done, we are then going to have some homework at the end of this week, which will carry you over the weekend into week 12. So I figured I'd make a little online lecture to talk about what the homework's all about, just so you know what's going on uh, starting after the 10th and going into next week. Okay, so first things first, let's go back to the project. So here we are back on the project two handout, which is under projects, under files. And so, of course, you guys have gone to the FIT website, you've chosen your toy, you're working on your initial brainstorming steps, which is that two-page paper with sketches, uh, and then you're doing this part here, which is planning an e-commerce website. Uh, and, of course, best way to do that is read through this section here, and like I said, visit a number of e-commerce sites and make that list of uh, interactive elements and visual elements that you think are most effective. Uh, also, you, you may have noticed at the bottom of the handout that there is a To Learn More website. This is a really good website, uh, a good post from HostGator, uh, which talks about building an e-commerce website. So I would also consider checking this out, uh, which gives you some really uh, good tips and a nice organized way for figuring out how to build a site. And like our project one, we're not building the entire site, of course, we're just doing three pages, but it's it's nice that your research uh, should really sort of encompass the whole process. Okay, so just so we're clear on uh, what we're doing in terms of the actual uh, build out of the site before we get into the homework, let's look at the specs section at the bottom of the handout. So uh, we have to include uh, uh, four pages actually in this project, I'm sorry, not three. So you have to include your home page, naturally, a, sh a shopping cart. Um, the design for a shopping guide, a product page. Now this can be a page that shows multiple items uh, or just one main item. And since you're picking one toy, uh, just showing the main item might be a good idea. But since in your brainstorming part, you were building out some ideas for other uh, features or accessories that could be sold with the toy or come with the toy, uh, you might want to highlight those too, or at least allude to them. So that's entirely up to you and your team. Uh, and then the last one is another of your choice. So the fourth page can be anything you want. Now this is where the research into other e-commerce sites really comes in handy because you'll be able to see what other types of pages they show. So you can certainly uh, come up with whatever you would like for the fourth page. So start thinking about that a little bit. Okay, um, and of course similar rules to last project. If you create a scrolling site you must include a minimum of four equal height sections uh, as opposed to four separate pages depending on whether you're doing a scrolling site or a page by page site. Uh, and also similar to last project for simplicity all website redesigns will be created at 1920 by 1080 pixels. So we don't have to worry about um, what the actual size is. So 1920 by 1080, although uh, that is a typo. This is not a redesign, it's a new design. Uh, above the fold content, if you're doing a scrolling site, 1920 by 1080, just like in our last one. And of course, on scrolling sites, each subsequent section would be the same. Okay, so all that should be pretty familiar to you. We did the same thing uh, on the last assignment. Now let's take a look at the homework. Uh, so the homework drops us in back into our uh, workflow, right? So now we're getting into the project workflow, uh, which we have used for the last project and we will continue to use uh, for this project. Now, because we have shifted to an online environment, I've actually removed some steps from the workflow from Canvas. If you go back to Canvas and go to Assignments, you'll see that for 
you know, project one, we had deliverable one, deliverable two, deliverable three, so on and so forth. But for project two, uh, we're doing the initial brainstorming steps, which we're working on now, but then we're jumping straight to deliverable three, uh, and then deliverable four, five, six, and seven. We skipped over deliverable one, two, uh, just because uh, working online, we're probably going to be working a little slower than we normally would. And I just wanted to make it easier for you guys to really get into the meat of this project. Uh, I am confident that you guys understand the earlier steps by now, uh, and so I think we don't have to continue to do that for now. So that means we're jumping right to step five, which is sketches, and step six, which is wireframes, and that's gonna be your homework uh, going into week 12. Let's see what those are. So we go over to our workflow, and you guys remember the bubbles. So we are jumping right into uh, step five which is sketch and step six which is wireframes and then next week after we get those done we'll jump over to the orange bubble which is step seven and we'll do our usability testing and then that'll leave the remainder of the semester to dive right into creating the prototype and publishing it so specifically what are those steps so five and six just to remind you uh, step five sketch is to create a site map uh, and to just do some rough sketches on paper of your different pages uh, and make some multiple iterations. Uh, and then you're going to, of course, turn in the uh, sitemap uh, as well as uh, any other rough sketches. Now, those rough sketches can include a site outline, which we've done before. You're certainly welcome to do a site outline, and we'll take a look at what those look like in a second. But you can also do any other types of sketches that just sort of helps you set to visualize what your site layout might look like. Um, but definitely a site map. And then the next thing you're going to create for homework is step six here, which is deliverable for uh, the wireframes. Now, we're all familiar with wireframes by now. And notice that it says digital uh, and printed or by hand on paper. Um, so you can do these digitally if you would like. Remember, we're doing only one screen per page, uh, or if you're doing a scrolling site, one section per page. So those are what the homework is. Now, they are due uh, next week. Uh, they are due actually on the 15th. So that gives you, assuming you finish everything up this week by the 10th, that gives you the 11th through uh, the 14th to get uh, those two pieces of homework done, which shouldn't really take that long. Um, so it's due the 15th at 9 a.m. If you go back to Canvas here, you'll see that uh, sketches and wireframes are due on April 15th at 9 a.m. So plenty of time to work on that. Uh, let me know how that works out. Now, just as a reminder as to what these sketches and wireframes look like and to go over some of our uh, thoughts about it. So if you want to do a site outline, you can. If you find it useful for you and your team to do that, it's not mandatory. Uh, it's not on the list, you'll notice, but you certainly can. And you remember that site outlines look like just regular outlines, the type of outline you might do for a research paper or something like that. So if you're familiar with that, you'll be familiar with this. Uh, then, of course, you're going to work on your site map. Now, this is required. You do have to do a site map, and it looks just like a hierarchical uh, organization chart, right? Uh, showing your homepage and then your uppermost navigation, and so on. Now, since you're only designing four pages, you only have to have a sitemap that encompasses those four pages. But if you want to make a sitemap that shows other pages that you're not designing, that you might just be sort of proposing, you're certainly welcome to include that too, just to sort of help uh, flesh out the narrative in your head about what your website is like. Remember, it's kind of like authors who write fictional novels and they write entire backstories for all the characters. Nobody ever reads those backstories other than the author, but it just sort of helps them go ahead and read the novel. So you might want to plan out a bunch of pages for your site, even though you're only designing four of them. Okay, then of course you have to do your wireframes. Now I'm showing this example because it's on graph paper, which is great. But um, this is what some wireframes have looked like that I've gotten in the UX design class. And so I reminded you guys on our first project that now that we're in Web Design 1, we really want our wireframes to look better than this. Um, there's no ruler being used here. Uh, none of the elements are super recognizable. It's a little too rough. So now I think you guys are at the stage where we've got to really tighten it up and make them look a lot nicer. Um, something like this would be great. And uh, as I've said before, graph paper or dot paper is acceptable. I don't care which one, whichever one you're happy with, but make sure you're using a ruler. Make sure that the elements you're showing, even though they're hand-drawn, are recognizable. Like these are very clearly uh, geo pins. These are very clearly info pop-ups. This is very clearly a button. 
Uh, that's very clearly a header bar with a uh, close, minimize, and maximize button. So just make sure that what you're drawing, even though it's done on paper, uh, is clear. You don't have to put in all the type, but some of it helps, and then the rest of it can just be sort of squiggles or lines that indicates type. Um, you know, this is very clearly a media player. So, you know, just make sure that you're being as neat and uh, clear about it as possible. Okay, so not that, this. Okay, great. So that is what the homework is. Uh, and if you have any questions about it, be sure to contact me and I'll help you out with it. So uh, you know what you're doing for week 11, right? Finish up your initial brainstorming, visit some other e-commerce sites to jot down ideas about really useful and uh, good elements. And then your homework between, say, the 11th and the 15th is to be uh, getting done steps five and step six. All right, next week we'll move forward with usability testing, uh, and uh, we'll talk more about that next week. All right, guys, hope all is going well. Miss you all. I will see you soon, hopefully. But in the meantime, be safe, be creative, and have some fun. All right, have a good day.